so it's time to time to start uh, being from Finland and very punctual. Uh, so my name is Heli Kangas and I come from VTT Technical Research Center of Finland and I work there as a technology manager. And the presentation that I will uh, give now, uh, it's about the maximizing the project impact. So dissemination, exploitation and communication, which Lisa already referred to in her presentation. And, and this is kind of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, expert opinion. So I'm, I'm more uh, uh, have been working hands on on these issues. So this this kind of what I'm here describing is is based on my my personal experience and, and the experience of my colleagues. So um, it, you might disagree. So this is not uh, something that it's a universal truth. And, and this is kind of um, the experience is, is based on I would say three three pillars, so to say. So it's firstly uh, being involved in the proposal preparation. So doing doing the actual proposals and and looking into these aspects, and then um, doing the projects. So kind of the real expertise when 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 you are actually doing what you were planning, and and then uh, realizing that it's never going to happen just as you planned. And, and the experience that you gain from that. And then also uh, working as a technology manager at VTT, because um, you might know that VTT is an uh, uh, organization that does applied research. So we are uh, doing the scientific stuff, but we always keep in mind of what is the kind of end result. So uh, it should, and our target is to make the kind of the uh, developments, innovations, technologies, materials, commercial one day, not by ourselves, but but uh, in collaboration with the commercial operator. But as I said, we, we do, uh, our basis is the scientific academic research. So I understand uh, from that perspective also that uh, how, how the path forward goes. And the outline of this presentation, I will first uh, say something about the key terminology uh, that, that kind of you need to know when, when starting to uh, do the proposal preparation. And, and then, then about this important content that is, is um, found in the proposal template and something uh, from the Horizon Europe work program, not uh, 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 as, as I said, it's more of a kind of a expert opinion, so I'm not referring to those documents that much. I think you can find those information from the portal and from, from Lisa's presentation. Uh, but something like where, where did I find the info at the moment? And, and then also a few words about what is new in Horizon Europe uh, compared to Horizon 2020. And this is not an extensive, uh, so to say, uh, uh, analysis because uh, there are documents that are not available yet. But that uh, the impression on the on the information that I was able to find so far. Uh, then I will I will give a few examples of how the dissemination and exploitation plan and the communication activities should look like, in my opinion. Again, I mean, uh, I could be wrong, but this is uh, uh, based on, on the experience that I've gained so far and my understanding on what is what the reviewers and, and the evaluators are looking at. Um, so the key terminology. Uh, so, uh, I mean, th this is uh, because this um, dissemination, exploitation uh, and communication activities, they are under the uh, section of um, impacts. So impact is, is an important thing. And, and with impacts, we mean kind of this wider long term effects on society and the environment, economy and science, which are enabled by this um, outcomes of these research and innovations. And, and also like the refers to the specific contribution that your project is, is having on the work program, uh, work program uh, and the expected impacts described in the destination. And, and the impacts, um, I mean, it's, it's as said, it's the long term effects, so they are expected to, to happen sometime after the end of the project. 
Uh, and then there are outcomes. So, and the, these are the expected effects uh, over uh, the medium term uh, of projects uh, under the given uh, topic. And, and these results that you obtain within the project should contribute the, to these outcomes. And, and then, then you can maximize these uh, results, uh, becoming outcomes in, uh, with these dis dissemination exploitation activities. Yes, and these are more kind of say, uh, it says here that it, these are medium term, uh, so shortly after after the end of project, but not during the project as are the results. And then there is the pathway to impact, which Lisa already discussed. So uh, then um, this is the way you describe on how how you kind of um, that you have the project. Yeah, you have your results and then you have the outcomes after the project. But how, how do you make the actual uh, impact on the kind of the in wider wider uh, perspective to society and so forth and and then uh, of course i mean you need to describe then that what you do with results uh, how you disseminate how you exploit how you communicate and 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 then how you make the impact so it's a kind of this um, as I said, the name pathway. So you describe the kind of the logical way on how you take your results, how you take them into commercial use, how to you take them into society, and how to how to benefit uh, the society in that way. And so and then a few words about this. Um, what is new? Uh, so uh, well. The first thing, as, as was already discussed in the chat, uh, that, that the page limit is, is nowadays, it's, it's um, 45 pages versus the 70 in the Horizon 2020. And I agree with Lisa that uh, then it's um, actually, uh, there is a need to be more concise with your um, uh, kind of description. But I think uh, the way it's described in the, in the work program or the, or the kind of proposal uh, template draft uh, that it the, you can be. So it's it's more well described on what is expected of you. So I wouldn't see this is a, as a problem. And and then also uh, in Horizon 2020 uh, there was a request of initial business plans for the parties uh, for the partners. So for example in one of the proposal that we put together, the, so there were like. Uh, I think eight industrial partners. So each of them make the initial business plans. And then it was really, so to say, um, it was difficult for them because they really needed to consider like what is happening after the project. And now when I look at them, they were not realistic at all. But this is something that is not requested at, at the proposal stage. And I will come back to that. Uh, then there is, uh, as I said, uh, there is uh, uh, kind of, uh, it's more, more to say, more um, well described of what is, what is expected of you. And there is also a number of page is recommendation per section. So when I, I go to the actual structure of the, of the proposal, you'll see that it's recommended that it's uh, five pages, uh, three pages and whatsoever. And then there is also this summary table uh, with describing the key elements of the impact section. So I, I feel that that is very helpful in the sense that you will, once you see it and, and then you kind of uh, start thinking uh, like, uh, what should I put here? And, and it really, with the help of that table, it's more, um, it's easier to describe the pathway to impact in my opinion. But let's see that in a in a short while. Uh, so and and then uh, about the important content in the proposal template and and the Horizon Europe work program. So as I said, this this um, all this maximizing the impact is obviously um, under impact. And, and here are some, uh, some from the proposal template, some, some issues that have been mentioned. Uh, so um, when you are writing the impact section, there are a few aspects that need to be taken into account. Into account. And, and this is the credibility of the pathway 
to achieve the expected outcomes and the impacts specified in the work program. So in, in, in a sense, you need to describe on how, how you get the results, how you uh, get the expected outcome and how you come up with the impacts. And, and the kind of the likely uh, the scale of the impacts and the significance. So if it's a small project, if it's more academic, then you can uh, say that what is the likely scale that it's um, uh, maybe the scale on, on scientific um, uh, kind of um, uh, exploitation is or in scientific impact is larger than than the maybe the commercial impact. But it's if it's a huge pilot program with multiple industrial partners who are putting money, then maybe the kind of the impact is more on the commercial aspect. So, so these kind of things. And, and, uh, and also like the, you need to describe uh, the kind of the suitability and quality of the measures to maximize the ex expected outcomes and in impacts as, as described in the dissemination and exploitation plan and including communication activities. So again, the kind of the uh, here also the scale and, and, and the, uh, the kind of suitability. So if you have a smaller project, more academic, then it's maybe the scientific dissemination. But again, uh, then if it's an industrial project, then, then the, maybe the emphasis needs to be on, on the exploitation of the results and, and achieving the impact commercially. Uh, creating jobs in in Europe and so forth, and uh, and then it's also about this uh, uh, medium medium term, and and then also like this longer term uh, description. So you need to kind of uh, uh, take into account the schedule of your actions. So what is happening uh, right after the project? what is your impact there and, and then what is the kind of the wider impact uh, over long term? Is there a uh, impact, larger impact in society and so forth? Yes. Uh, so and then uh, the, it's the, uh, the actual measures to maximize, maximize impact. So it's the uh, dissemination, exploitation and communication. And here it's um, in the proposal template is said that, for example, five pages. And, and then it's, it needs to be a description of uh, the planned measures to maximize the impact uh, by providing this first version of your plan for the dissemination and exploitation, including communication activities. So and you you uh, need to kind of describe the both the dissemination, exploitation and communication, what you are going to do and, and the kind of the targets uh, group assessed. So uh, addressed. So both of those, what are you going to do and uh, who are you targeting it? And of course, then we will look at the kind of examples of the plans, but then it's good to good to kind of uh, uh, describe on how how you are how you are going to do that. And uh, this is again something that was mentioned by Lisa. So it's, it's actually that this plan is an admissibility condition unless it's said otherwise. And, and, and then, of course, if it's, its proposal is successfully selected for funding, then you need to uh, 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 provide a more detailed plan for dissemination exploitation. And, and, and that will within the uh, six months after the signature date. And, and then it's all, you know, I would uh, personally put this, it said that it, this plan shall be periodically updated in alignment with the project progress. I would put these as deliverables as well, so that there will be kind of this uh, uh, kind of the uh, more detailed plan and then some intermediate plan and then also the final plan, because uh, uh, this, this at least um, as said, uh, it doesn't stop when the protest stops. There should be some activities uh, after the project as well, if it's successful. And of course, then uh, this kind of exploitation plan also includes the uh, plan on how you are going to finance that. You don't have the project funding any longer, but you need to think of how to do that, how to keep up with this, this uh, kind of the project outcomes, the impacts after the project as well. Uh, 
so and then it's uh, said about the communication uh, and it's uh, there was a lot of discussion about uh, in the chat about what is the difference between the communication and dissemination and Lisa provided um, a good good kind of um, description so um, uh, dissemination is about the results and communication about the uh, uh, both the project and the results and and there the kind of the with communication the scope is wider than just your st own stakeholders or the interest groups so it's it's a um, kind of this society at large and 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 the use um, uh, kind of the how your um, um, what impact and and how how what the what the results are going to be used and and um, and what are the benefits for the citizens and the society and, and in here it's stressed that it's need to be kind of it needs to be planned as and and with clear objectives and and um, starting at the when the project starts and continuing through the lifetime and it. Uh, it was also somewhere mentioned that they, they, they didn't, shouldn't be some ad hoc communication so that when you receive something that uh, a result or something that is you uh, kind of think that well this is impactful I will I will um, uh, you know uh, uh, release a press press uh, release tomorrow so it should be so to say uh, uh, it should be very well planned, but of course, I mean, the project never goes as it's planned, so it, there should be a possibility of, of revising this plan as well and, and keeping up with the project uh, also. So uh, there should be room for this kind of um, uh, some uh, surprises as well. Uh, and, and again, this is something that is repeated. So the all measures should be proportionate to the scale of the project and, and should contain uh, concrete actions to be uh, acted on both during and after the uh, end of the project. So for example, standardization activities. And, and in many, many calls in, within Horizon Europe, we have already seen that there are these standardization activities also mentioned there and it's very important to consider those as well and standardization as you might know it doesn't happen very quickly so it needs to it takes years to get actually a standard approved and uh, yes and and then uh, also kind of these um, these policy measures should be not forgotten uh, so uh, kind of this um, uh, it should be described whether this this your uh, your results your impact your outcomes will be kind of uh, assisting this uh, or have some positive uh, feedback to the policy measures uh, and 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 uh, the authorities and they, there should be a link to this uh, policy and and uh, policy issues also and new policy initiatives and decisions so that should be kind of considered like how you communicate these issues with the uh, with the policymakers and the authorities. Uh, then it's about um, uh, more about this um, exploitation. So uh, and, and the kind of the IPR issues. So it's the um, kind of this old so to say rule that first uh, consider whether your results uh, could or outcomes could have like commercial re relevance and if yes then you should kind of look into into uh, protecting them and if not then you should uh, kind of um, uh, come up with another uh, another idea on how to how to uh, how to exploit how to uh, possibly disseminate the results so then you can kind of make a scientific publication and this this is a guideline that um, uh, it's not that straightforward so uh, for example you can do both I mean you can at the same time uh, protect the results and then uh, make the make the kind of the publication but first you should check uh, uh, also the kind of this uh, whether there is something that is, is uh, giving you a competitive advantage in terms of commercialization 
and, and also uh, protect that. And there should be a clear plan on how you are going to do that and how, how you are going to manage this IPR with the partners of your consortium. So there should be a, a consortium agreement that it's kind of unanimously said that this, this will be uh, how the ownership goes and what is the kind of the uh, um, how you how you manage. So it's usually uh, well, it's always that the IPR belongs to the to the party who has generated them, but sometimes there is joint ownership and how to deal with these situations. So uh, that should be also uh, kind of uh, planned well in advance. Uh, then I, I uh, said that there is a summary uh, section. So uh, there, there is this 2.3 uh, where you should provide a summary of the impact section uh, by uh, presenting this canvas of the key elements of your project impact pathway and the measures to maximize its impact. So, and I, I personally found this very helpful. So, this is how it, this uh, uh, summary table uh, looks like. So, there are kind of the uh, questions that make you think about this, this kind of uh, what questions you should answer. Uh, specific needs. Uh, what are the specific needs that uh, that were triggered uh, with this project? And, and then there might be some kind of challenges that, OK, there is a challenge uh, within this, this kind of process or material. I need to uh, generate a new one. Or oh, there could be a, a need that this is, uh, for example, uh, uh, well, I'm now talking about my field of interest. So uh, plastics are polluting the oceans. We need more, so to say, sustainable alternative plastics. So let's develop them. So these are the kind of the needs and, and, and that you could uh, kind of describe here. And then the expected results. What do you expect uh, to generate by the end of the project? My example, the plastics, for example, is that we have a, a bio-based um, plastic uh, uh, mimicking material that can be manufactured with the existing equipment. And, and then uh, this, uh, once you have established that, and also the scale that we will uh, have it piloted or demonstrated at the end of the project. And then these kind of this um, uh, dissemination, exploitation, communication methods, uh, how there should be a plan on how, how you are going to do that. So the exploitation would be then that uh, if I don't have the manufacturer of my new material in the consortium, is that we will we will license, we will patent this uh, method development and we will license it to this, this, uh, this uh, uh, partner that or stakeholder that is, is going to uh, produce it commercially. And, and then, of course, I mean, how, how, to we, how do we then uh, uh, disseminate this, this, uh, uh, this uh, development and, and how we communicate. Communication could be then that, uh, you know, that we are saving oceans with this new material and so forth. Uh, but these are just uh, kind of ad hoc examples, and, but something that, that needs to be considered then by you. And then also uh, the good plan uh, is actually describes uh, the uh, the target groups. So who who will use or further update the results of this project, whether it's it's commercial the co exploitation. So for me, it's the material um, material manufacturer, for example, and 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 then who will benefit? It's the packaging uh, producers. Also, they will be interested. It's the um, uh, indirectly, like here, it's the society as they are using more sustainable materials. It's the environment, so forth. Uh, environmental protectionist, the Green Party, whoever, and 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 then. Uh, 
the outcomes on what change do you expect after successful dissemination and exploitation? Uh, well, I mean, given my examples, it's, it would be then that we, we kind of uh, uh, partially solve the plastic, uh, plastic uh, problem and then also uh, make the consumers more aware of, of the solutions and, and, uh, and so forth. And then uh, there is also the impacts. Uh, what are the impacts uh, expected wider scientific, economic, societal effects of the project contributing to the uh, expected impacts? Uh, well, these, these are uh, very similar. What is the difference between the out outcome outcomes? Um, so in here again, I would uh, describe uh, that uh, Scientifically, we have uh, information, wider kind of more information on how to make these materials. Economically, we have generated um, new new type of materials that might be if there is a, a partner, for example, an SME who has this this type of license on a new material, they might generate new jobs and and so forth and the societal effects that we, we have environmental benefits. Um, so, but I think this, this is kind of the, this very helpful when you start considering uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, kind of the pathway, I would say that, that you have your results, that you, you have your income, outcomes, impacts, and who, how should you do the dissemination and exploitation to get there? So I think this is very helpful. Uh, then there, this um, uh, dissemination and exploitation and communication is also mentioned under implementation. So uh, here it's mentioned that it's it's um, uh, there should be a resource uh, assigned to these activities, uh, so uh, which are in in line with the objectives and deliverables. So you should uh, kind of reserve enough uh, enough resources do this dissemination and exploitation activities. So uh, they are um, uh, suggesting distinct tasks or distinct work packages. So for example, there could be a one work package uh, uh, related to whole exploitation, dissemination, communication, and, and all the activities are collected there. And there is also a, a remark that you need to uh, uh, update the required plan for dissemination. Uh, dissemination exploitation plan. Yes, uh, I think I'm just shortly uh, short of running out of time, so I will hurry on. Uh, but there is, a, I wanted to mention a thing that Lisa, Lisa mentioned also, so that there is in a, a general annexes, there is a mention of the admiss, admissibility that there Applications must include a plan for the exploitation and dissemination uh, of results. And, and this plan is not required for applications at the first stage of the two stage procedures, but it, it is uh, then needed for the second stage if, if the proposal proceeds there. And I think um, uh, that is something that uh, you can then uh, get familiar later on. But then also I, I mentioned that there, um, uh, there is no uh, business plan required with your, or initial business plan uh, required with your dissemination, exploitation and communication plan. However, there is this uh, check for financial capacity and, and there it's mentioned that the grant preparation stage, um, you need a business plan. But then uh, when I looked at the rules for legal entity validation and, and so forth, uh, there was no mention of the business plan, not explicitly mentioned uh, in the list of documents to submit. So this is a bit um, unclear for me what they mean uh, with the business plan in this financial operational capacity uh, check. So uh, this remains to be seen, but at least in the proposal uh, preparation template, there is no business plan for the partners. 
So that's that's what I know of. And it's in any way very clearly instructed in the proposal template on how you do the your planning with the uh, dissemination, exploitation and communication. And then I will I will go uh, towards the kind of the next um, section of my presentation. So um, what could the plan for dissemination and exploitation contain? And, and then again, again, the disclaimer that these examples and opinions are my own and uh, are not representing any official position. So you might disagree with me completely. Uh, but uh, I hope still that these examples are helpful to you when you when you uh, guide the uh, proposal preparation or the persons who are doing that. Uh, so the dissemination plan uh, kind of this um, outline uh, uh, could look uh, like this. So there is uh, kind of this um, I will give an example of a more detailed plan, but these, these are the kind of these um, uh, measures uh, that are planned and the target plan, target groups. So you should kind of uh, think of the uh, target audiences uh, that you uh, want to reach. So whether it's uh, the scientific community, the industry groups, public administration, uh, or general public, or all of these, or some of these, and these are just an examples. But uh, keep in mind that 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 uh, it's not. I mean, the messages and the dissemination is a bit different on depending on the target audience. And then also the kind of the key messages that you want to give uh, from the project. So are there just research results? Uh, uh, kind of uh, for your information that we have now obtained this and that, or are they more scientific so that there is a no scientific impact? Are there other kinds of impacts that we have reached, like societal impacts that we have now, uh, you know, achieved a 15 percent reduction in energy consumption or, or something like that? And then the channels that you need to consider. So uh, is it all to websites? Is it the commission's platforms? Is it the social media and so forth? Uh, what kind of uh, channels do you want to want to use? I mean, or, or all of it. So it should be very carefully planned. And also in here, uh, you should keep in mind that uh, that in in several of these call texts, you might have a kind of um, uh, reference or request to to kind of um, uh, also uh, target the message towards standardization, uh, regulation or trading, depending on the call type also. So keep this in mind. And these are just um, uh, kind of this more detailed dissemination plan, just an, just an example. Uh, so uh, it should uh, contain information like uh, what what kind of um, uh, platform you are using, when, so the timetable, when you are going to do that, what is the target audience that you are targeting with this, this kind of um, dissemination, uh, so to say platform, what is the purpose? So it's, it's not just that you need to do that and you are, have promised the commission, but you should have a real purpose on, on that behind that, that you want to disseminate something. And also I, I would advise to include some kind of a key performance indicator. It could be like in the case of websites, so number of site visits, duration of the vi visits, geographic locations, because that really kind of helps you to target these messages also. Uh, if you get a lot of, um, for example, um, um, kind of audience from a different a certain uh, geographic lo location, you might start wondering like why, what is the reason? And you find that, okay, there is this, um, they are piloting this very similar solutions and maybe they are interested in our offering as well. And then you should also specify targets, like uh, how many visits do you want? What is the duration of this, this kind of um, visit and and if you see that okay you only have like your target is 500 visits a month and then you only have one 
uh, well, maybe you should do something about it. Or the duration is of visit is one second, so maybe it's it's not very interesting on what you are sewing. And and then there are the other kind of platforms that you should consider also like social media, newsletters, videos, scientific publication, workshops. I mean, this this is all dependent. As as it was said, um, it's all about the scale and suitability of your project. So for some some instances, like if you have a very um, if you have a coordination and support actions, and then it's the social media and videos and are maybe uh, very important and the visibility in general than maybe scientific publications and the workshops when you are trying to, to reach out to, to, you know, whoever is, is the target group of this coordination and support action. But this is, um, this is something that is an example of the detailed dissemination plan. And, and some lessons uh, that I've learned over the years, uh, so uh, as I already mentioned, include like quantitative measures such as these key for uh, indicators and, and, and describe how I use going to use them. As I described just now that not just, you know, that we will receive this and it doesn't, it's kind of, it doesn't have any meaning if you say that our target is 500 visits and then you get one and you do nothing about it. So you need to kind of keep up with that planning as well. And, and then, as I said, specific targets and mitigation measures. So um, you can include in the planning also the mitigation measure. So if, if you say that there is a, uh, two little visitors in my web page, what do I do? Uh, launch a so social media campaign to, to promote it or get some, some very interesting content to it or something. But it could be, um, you know, you should describe it and not just leave it lingering there and empty meaning. And, and then be very ambitious but realistic. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you can set the targets, but it's if it's like uh, you're starting with your project, it's not realistic that you will uh, make uh, scientific publications in the first few months of the of the project, or that your um, within one month the number of site visits will be ten thousand or something. It's it's very <laughs> very difficult to get the, the you know. There's a lot of ongoing in the web as well, so um, a lot of competition in that sense. And so be realistic there. And, and creativity and novelty are appreciated. Uh, so you should come up, uh, or it's, I, I wouldn't say you should, but it's advisable that you come up with a new type of kind of dissemination. Uh, as Lisa also said that it's, it's um, sometimes the, the plans are very kind of, you read them through, you know, similar types of things like so many times before that it just feels like, nothing new is, is coming. Uh, but uh, and so if you come up with a brilliant idea on how, how you can actually disseminate in a novel way, so just put it there, but not at the expense of the overall dissemination. So they shouldn't be so, so, so to say, out there that the evaluators don't even understand what you are meaning. And uh, in that sense, I'm not a very creative person, so I can't give you, you know, an example on the top of my head of what this novelty would be. I have, would have used it uh, uh, already if I had that. Uh, but, you know, there are people who are, are, are kind of uh, more, so to say, creative in that sense. And, and then also, like, uh, use your own language. So describe this, this dissemination, how you're going to do it in your own language and do not copy paste. For example, when for this training, I went through a, a few um, proposals that uh, were successful at VTT, and, and the, it always started with this sentence. So uh, kind of um, copy pasting something that is already found in the commission's web pages. So, you know, come up with your own. It doesn't, I mean, the meaning is empty if it's just copy paste and I need to put it here and not even think like, what it, what does it mean? So don't do that. 
Uh, then about the exploitation plan and what things to, to kind of consider. Uh, so you should come up with the kind of the value proposition of, the, of your project results. And as already mentioned uh, by Lisa, these, these not, need not to be commercial, but they can be non-commercial as well. Uh, but we call them uh, key exploitable results, and then it's, if it's commercial, then you can make an, not an ac acronym, but separate those. So some partners are obviously interested in, in the commercial uh, exploitable results, and some partners uh, do not have, they are non-profit, they don't have any commercial activities, they are interested in something else. So list them and, and see the value. And also pay attention on the IPR management, as I already said, it should be uh, very clearly defined uh, in, the, uh, in your uh, uh, consortium agreements, like what is, the, what is the access to results and, and so forth. And there is a, a good model for that as well. And, and then also like this including risks. So uh, in the beginning, you should have a, like a sense that, OK, what is the novelty? What is the freedom to operate with without technologies, without materials and so forth? But also follow that up during the project. So uh, every once in a while, kind of pay attention, like what what IPR are we generating and what is the risk that uh, there is no we cannot use them after the project. So, uh, for example, that there is another another partner, another project doing exactly the same that they are they have the IPR, then they blocked your, your kind of uh, freedom to operate in that sense. And then also, if it, uh, it's um, not uh, asked the initial business plan in the proposal template, uh, but also you should consider what is happening in business-wise uh, after the project. And why not during the project if there is a speedy, so to say, development. So some kind of uh, uh, financial analysis, how you are going to fund it uh, after the project, your development and the value chain, who is needed there. And then also like this, uh, for example, uh, non-commercial exploitation, can the results be used in standardization, regulation, training, as already mentioned uh, within the dissemination. Uh, so here is an example of, of kind of this um, uh, exploitation table. So as I said, uh, the, you should uh, kind of uh, identify the uh, uh, key exploitable results that will come out of your project. So uh, for example, a new material or a new competence, which is not, not commercial. So uh, this, this partner, this, this example, he, they are not going to use their new competence in well for example selling in it as a consultancy service so they are just going to to disseminate that okay we are now experts in this and this so come come to us and we will or take us as a partner in your new projects because we we know what we are doing and in terms of commercial then it would be then uh, for example um, uh, a partner creates a new new material and then they have the know-how uh, and IPR, the patent or patent applications to make this material and they will license it. And at the end of the project, it's at the technology readiness level six. So it's, it's um, demonstrated in relevant environment, but you still need to make it uh, commercial. So you need a scale up and, and, and you uh, kind of uh, uh, maybe uh, if you want to do it, uh, be involved in the scale up, you, you apply a grant with your um, some, some other partners or commercial partner and, and then uh, estimation uh, after the project at the time to market is five years, but it's uh, shorter when you, when you do the scale up. So kind of this uh, those overall plan that, that you actually uh, make it to the market or make it somewhere uh, what, depending on your exploitation goal. So uh, there could be different exploitation goals like licensing and uh, when talking about commercial and then maybe a spin-off. And then for one partner, it's just the increase in revenue. For example, we have a new technology that is ready. It's for uh, zero years to market after the project 
and we just use it and, and we increase our revenue. So yes, this, this is something that the exploitation plan should look like or could look like, I would say, in my experience. And here I'm just highlighting that the uh, key exploitable result is really the value proposition and then the stakeholders involved are the value chain. So you in, uh, kind of uh, think of the whole value chain, who you need to uh, have there that you will uh, exploit this result. The whole, whole value chain. And then uh, the financial analysis is the thing that you need to kind of think of how you are progressing after the after the project. So it's not, uh, you know, realistic maybe that that everything is solved during the project. But if you want to make it commercial, which you won't do during the project, what is the kind of uh, the finance that you are then going to apply? Uh, so and um, then about the exploitation and the lessons learned, uh, it's uh, when when you are kind of doing this exploitation plan and, and um, it's very good to actually draft the value chain. And for example, here in the in the uh, bottom of this slide is is one very cr uh, kind of screwed or unrefined example of the uh, value chain. So then, and maybe you know, it's more more um, in my field of expertise. So, for example, you have the raw materials. Who is going to provide you the raw materials for this this uh, value chain? And then you need some kind of compounding to make mix them raw materials uh, together. Who is going to do that? And what is the process it's it's going to do be done with? Then you have the component, who is going to do the component, and then uh, there is a, a kind of system that you apply the component to, and who is this, so to say, end user. So this, this is a very rough idea of the value chain. And this, when you draft this value chain and you identify all the partners that you need here, this helps in the consortium building also. So then you can actually say that, okay, well, I mean, I'm missing this comp compounding partner here so who should I contact and then you try to find that and get it to your consortium and then it's very uh, so to say convincing and credible to the commission or the evaluators as well that okay well this person has really thought about what is the value chain and how to make it all the way to the kind of exploit the results and then also um, I mean uh, continue with identifying the key exploitable results based on the on your value chain and also the question of uh, all the needed stakeholders part of your consortium. Do you have everyone? Or for example, are you missing uh, the end user or are there other end users that might be interested in, in your, uh, in your uh, kind of this uh, results or, or your outcome after the project that are not part of that, but you could contact and maybe license your material to them. So yeah. And, uh, that is that is one part of the exploitation as well. Uh, and then this this exploitation planning should should really be a joint effort of all the partners. Uh, and this way it's it's more kind of credible and and as uh, has higher chance to actually realize. So it's not, for example, it's not credible uh, if I'm a the raw material provider. Probably I cannot imagine uh, the kind of the end use system that is there. I might have some ideas, but they might be a you know wrong one once. So maybe and then if this um, end user probably he understands the component, but he doesn't understand the raw materials. So I would suggest that once once you well the kind of the leading partner in this in this project when. Uh, they have drafted the value chain and contacted the consortium partners. This kind of exploitation planning should be, you know, done together. And and this, um, uh, my experience, this kind of this professional uh, consultancies, when you have the, the, these these ones on board in your proposal, uh, they often know kind of the right terms. Uh, for putting together this impressive exploitation plan, uh, but it 
often lacks the content and commitment uh, from other partners. So it's it's right in a sense that it looks good on paper, but uh, the realization is is something that it's it's very likely not to happen. So that's that's uh, I would. I would rather use my own words and terms here than to use the fancy terms given by the consultants and then kind of uh, uh, lack maybe the, the actual commitment and, and the actual realization in here. And here are some links uh, to, to materials on exploitation and dissemination. Uh, these I uh, could uh, only find uh, for the kind of Horizon 2020. Maybe there are uh, new links for Horizon Europe, but I think the kind of the lessons, and, uh, the materials are good. So I, I, I'm not expecting that these uh, kind of um, will change so much. So there's social media guide and how to make the full use uh, and then um, information about the open research Europe and that at least is, is uh, for Horizon Europe as well. Uh, then a few words about the communication activities. Uh, so uh, this is something that is um, advice from the funding and tenders portal and, and it said here uh, that uh, it's it's part of the proposal um, and, and either as a specific work package uh, or including them in another work package. As I said, it's, it's an option to have like dissemination, exploitation, communication as one work package. And this communication will be taken into consideration as part of the award criteria. Uh, code communication plan, clear objectives and adapted to various relevant target audiences and uh, description of each activity and also the timing. So not uh, it good planning and not these kind of um, um, ad hoc activities that you just plan on the spot. And, and with your communication activity, you should draw attention uh, to EU policy area addressed by the call. Some, some uh, which uh, Lisa also showed, uh, so I think um, this is something that I already said uh, many, many times before, but I would uh, uh, kind of highlight uh, this uh, clear communication objectives. Uh, so really think of what you want to accomplish and, and then uh, final and intermediate communication aims, specify them and what, what is the impact that you are actually targeting. And, and what reaction or change is expected from the target audiences. And maybe running slightly out of time here, so I will uh, skip the rest of this and maybe um, uh, go to my kind of own experiences. Uh, so some things to consider, uh, also like communication related to standardization, regulation and training. So kind of the maybe uh, because this is uh, for wider audience and, and, and you should consider those, those audiences as well and maybe target the message that it reaches these, these um, also. And I think this kind of authorities is, is uh, in a wider perspective in the EU context. And, and then also consider like the, you have your key messages, but you can find you in them for uh, different target audiences. So you don't need to speak the kind of similar or repeat the similar message if you are uh, talking, for example, to, to standardization or then the, um, you know, like the uh, general public and then, then the kind of regulators. So you can find you them and think of uh, how this, this message is going through to the audience. And, and then also like this, have these intermediate and final targets on your communication plan. And here are some, some exa example in uh, kind of the uh, communication plan. And I would, I would kind of this, uh, start with this main objective or main message, what you want to communicate. So is it about uh, that you have this project and, and the project progress? 
uh, is it the kind of the are you targeting at uh, uh, well targeting at telling the impact to the wider society like will this project I I am we are going to accomplish this and that and and then also like the if you want to some kind of stakeholder engagement in project scoping if you want the kind of response from the audience so uh, that's that's different and 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 then also like the dissemination of the scientific results what kind of uh, reaction do you want from there and for example this stakeholder engagement in project scoping that can be done uh, in terms of workshops so you organize this and say that hey we have this project and we these are the results and we would like to hear your feedback on on uh, where should we target and where should we focus and and what are the kind of the how you see it and, and then also uh, uh, think of the uh, communication medium and means how you are going to do it the level will you address the whole world the eu or national and and that can be done in national languages consider that because in in some countries the english is probably not the kind of the best language to be used and who are your target audiences and also here i would put these key performance indicators into the communication activities and the timing when are you going to do that is it monthly that you are going to this uh, kind of this communicate this about your project or in in case of this uh, this stakeholder in, engagement if you really want feedback from the kind of the community uh, you know before reaching milestone 2 which is uh, at 2 years after your project starts so you know communicate or do this communication activity in good time before that so you get the feedback uh, and, and then some uh, lessons learned here again i would um, uh, kind of um, think uh, carefully about the involvement of the communications professional i mean uh, you can get i mean it's uh, you can get very impressive uh, communication materials from this so uh, they can they can do the strategy for you they can do the targeting and the visual appearance uh, and and you it's it's a pleasure to actually visit the web pages that has have not been done by a scientist or an engineer so you can you can really uh, feel that you are in a professional environment but then again there is a challenge that the content is usually missing or the substance so i would kind of encourage that use use this kind of communication professional in to some extent but then not rely on them completely because then you lack the substance and and then also uh, for the communication tools i would use the networks of the consortium so for example if you are um, involved in some public private partnership use them for communication communicate them any uh, ngos alliances that you are part of on different kind of uh, platforms so i would use those those were uh, to make it make it um, and these can be kind of um, targeted communication messages as well i think um, there are some more information again uh, provided here and link EU guide to science communication and, and communication EU research and commons uh, workout webinar where you can actually get some you know ba very basic information of the how to communicate uh, but with that I think I'm at the end of my presentation uh,